Welcome to Cat the Minion YouTube channel. My name is Teresa, but you can call me Cat. This is a this is gonna be a love reading, and I've been thinking about it for a few days on and off um, since before Valentine's Day. It's now after. We're sort of hitting that full moon energy. Uh, I've got the Gilded Reverie Lenormand here. Um, and I was debating whether or not I wanted to do a 9 grid or a 16, and I think I'm going to do a 16 because I want to get some extra info. Uh, I do 9s and um, and I offer 16s, and the 9s are a little cheaper. Um, that's the main difference. And I've got the Scrabble tiles here instead of um, an Oracle card. So I, I shuffled and cleared the cards already. I shaken and stirred these. Um, and I'm going to get that in a minute. So I'm really excited. I've got a commission that I'm working on this week. Um, it's going well. Um, I think I'm getting it faster than the last one, which is ideal because there's less existential trauma in the middle for me, and then I can feel better about it when it's done. So that's exciting, and uh, that's not the main thing, though. I've got... A project that I've contributed to uh, and it's just moved into the next stage of the project and I'm really excited about it um, and I'll talk about that more once it's out um, and I've been working on my Angel Oracle deck you can't see all of them but these ones the first two that I've finished I've uh, put up on Instagram already so I have this card and this one and you can just see the edges of the other three that I finished so the, my uh, Oracle deck is on its way and I'm excited about the progress on that I'm using the 24 pack Sharpie so there is a limited palette but and they end up being kind of neon tones they're sort of like eye sear eyeball searingly bright um, because of what's available but this is how I wanted to color it so that's how I'm coloring it so there's gonna be 47 cards and then I have to do a back image and then I gotta figure out how I'm going to produce them whether I'm gonna do it myself or seek out a publisher so if you have an opinion uh, feel free to message me my email is in my link tree it's linked down it's posted down below um, so there's that. Um, I kind of don't want to self-publish because there it's there's difficulties, but then there's the whole like you know contracts and regulations and restrictions and people's opinions and things like that that I'd have to deal with if I sought out a publisher. But we'll see. It might also take longer to come out, but whatever. Um, I'll figure it out when I get there, but they're they're in progress. These are I think they're three by five, so uh, if you can read my scrappy handwriting at the edge, you can figure out who these are. But these are angels, and um, they will be oracle cards. So the and if I don't run through all the markers, I'm going to be redoing my music deck in the same style. Or I'll buy different kind of markers and do it with like um, more colors. Maybe I'll do that. I'll just I'll get uh, I'll expand the color because the the music deck's gonna be a full tarot deck, so uh, probably want more colors so the cards don't get boring. Um, and so I can do more ethnicities because there's like a dark brown and then this sort of tan peachy color and that's all I've got in this in this pack not a lot of variety okay so um or I could make somebody orange but that's not that's not that great all right so the reading so I did clear and shuffle these already I've been considering doing a love reading for a while and then just kind of passed on it because for a couple of months there I was doing um astrology by element and then having a fifth week with love reading I don't remember if I did that for like two months or three months but it's kind of right. over here 
here. Oh, come on, table crack it out of my face. Oh, did I say 16? I don't know, I feel like doing nine, but I guess I'm doing 16. I kind of feel like I want to do a nine now instead, but I'm kind of where I'm at. I think nines are better for pick a piles when there's a bunch of piles of lugs. forward too far. I'm having a problem with my back because I've got a herniated disc and it's like radiating down into my hip and causing me problems right now. Okay. Go. Oriental carpet. It reminds me of Weave World. Is that? Whatever. Not really PC to say it like that. Okay. I guess that's close enough. All right, so we're going to look at these tiles that fell out. doesn't really matter whether they're up or down, but right away I have O, D, G, and A. So, I mean, I have the word goad here. Six points total. Um, and it gives me this idea that there's perhaps some coercion going on or a dare, or a bet involved with a relationship. If C... I just heard you sank my battleship. I have I... L... N... This makes me think of clinic. So hopefully people are cleaning their junk, but who knows? A and P. Ooh, somebody's tired. I take a nap. Okay. Let me look at this. Plain. Something in plain sight. Or something's coming into plain sight here. Um, oh, I don't have an R. Okay. Ink. Mm. There's a missing Y. So there's why someone has been playing like a player the why it happened or why they did it is missing but we can see with this goad at the beginning that it's like it's almost like someone put them up to it or they were trying to force something to happen that would not have on its own like a peer pressure, whether they were pressuring you or being pressured from the outside. But I'm not saying that the viewer is a victim and also the energy can go both ways. It has to do with lessons and a sort of naivete or like an innocence. Like, oh, I didn't even see that coming. 
I'm also getting this idea of complaining. Like it doesn't do any good complaining. Maybe somebody doesn't believe you. Ooh. I'm also seeing the word clap here. So again, there's this sort of subtle um, indication of maybe getting your junk checked. Like if you've been with somebody who was goading you or playing you, you might want to get tested. But also this idea of clapping like, oh, like it's a show, like there's been a show, especially if they were a player or if uh, someone goaded them into like, aha, they fell for it. Jolly good. Bravo. What a performance, you know, what an eccentric performance. I also see goal. Like again, like a like they something was done on purpose with a goal in mind. But the issue is that there's been pain that's been caused. And it's sort of um a recoil. Like they may have shot you, but they they just got smacked in the eye. I hurt myself by hurting you, a little little Christina Aguilera there. CD. Some kind of music involved. Like there's some kind of song that is either very reminiscent of what's going on or reminds you of what's going on. You know, like, oh, this reminds me of you. <laughs> um, but it could also be a cash deposit. Like a little swindle, a little swindle action. There's one more permutation of these chips that I need to look at. I'm just gonna... I saw this, and I'm not gonna say it out loud. You can read yourself. Again, check on your stuff. Oh, a canal. Like, digging deep enough to... Um, to sort of puncture the feelings. Like a... Like, if you think of what a canal is, it's a, something that's dug between, through a landmass, to create um, passage for um, shipping, like um, commerce, money, to exchange goods and services. But what happens with a canal is that something that was dry becomes very wet. Um, we're talking about like digging a hole where something that would, where emotions start creeping in where they might not have. So in this, it's sort of like I'm doing a transaction. I'm on this person, but now I seem to have uh, open the way for something to come back towards me. Again, it's that recoil energy. Like I got something that I wasn't bargaining for and it might have been feelings. You know, like they, they played around, fooled around and fell in love kind of energy, which is a song. Oh man, there's another one. Again, check your stuff. Make sure you're clean. Oh. That wasn't what I was trying to get to. There's another thing that I need to... Facing.
Hold on, I've got to to think about where I'm putting these. I've got to think about where I'm placing the letters. Let's put it that way. I'm kind of seeing this like dopa, like dopamine. Again, it's that like that hit like haha, this is entertaining. But it's broken up. It doesn't last. Yeah, I really feel like I want to put this back onto the goad that was started with. Even though it doesn't quite make sense that way. I want to do this too. I want to say something's lacing. Like it's... I've given you something that's laced with maybe roofies or something. Or um, I'm cinching something. I'm tightening it up. I'm, it's there's a constriction. So I have paid, and then I have do, and then I have no. There's, there's this idea of someone um, someone getting paid to constrict someone else. Someone constricting someone to get money out of them. Someone who is on this idea, well, do I do it or do I not do it? Like, no, that's bad. But am I going to do it anyway? Did they already do it? I'm not going to put up with this again. Someone's doing it already. They've been doing it. Trying to see if there's anything else here. This is kind of getting carried away, but I got a lot of tiles, and I feel like there's something that needs to be looked at. And I don't like really starting out with sort of negative messages, especially because it seems very specific. But it seems to me that there's a lot of sort of. intentionally abusing other people for gains either to uh, to uplift yourself and entertain yourself or to entertain a crowd and just saying you as if the person who is out on the prowl looking for someone to siphon uh, energy emotion resources um, like sexual integrity out of you know, like it, it, and it doesn't have to be the exact same thing. It's like, oh, I'm going to ask you out f as a joke and then my friends are going to laugh at you. Or I'm going to seduce you and give you an STD as a power trip. Or I'm going to um, seduce you and, and then uh, financially abuse you. Sy siphon all your money out of you. Or I'm going to... Um, seduce you and then emotionally abuse you so that I can suck up your energy. Those kinds of things. It's a predatory framework that has to do with 
diminishing or taking something away from someone. Um, and a lot of it has to do with boundaries and um, it's like I'm going to tarnish you in some way. I'm going to knock you off your pedestal in some way. I'm going to come over and kick your sandcastle over in some way just to mess with you. But the problem is that in the process, whoever's doing that, who's ever doing that, is causing themselves pain. In some way, it's because of karmic debt that they're increasing. But it's something that they will be paying for. But what's missing there is the why. Like, why are you even doing this? I don't know. And it's like, is it worth, have you been entertained? Was it worth it? You know, like slow clap. I also did see alpaca in the letters, but I'm not sure what that has to do with anything, unless it's the idea of pulling the wool over somebody's eyes. But that was also incomplete, too. It's like, um, you're only really fooling yourself if you think that you're going to improve your life in some way by abusing another person physically, emotionally, financially. All right, let's do the cards here. I have to, I have to stop this for a second before I flip over the cards because I have to go put wood in the stove. Okay. So we have the alternate man here, inverted, ace of cups. This is the emperor energy here. Mars energy, Aries. We have the ring, Ace of Wands, contractual like even. We have the Tower, Six of Swords. This tower is about bureaucracy, number 19. This is 25 and that's 28. So we have four the house inverted with the king of cups. So far, I'm not that surprised to see these cards given what I had in the tiles. And we have the cross inverted, six of wands inverted, number 36. Southern cross. Well... So we have the well number 41. This is an extra card in this deck, so it just has the symbols on it down here for the suits. So for me, this ends up being Major Arcana. Coming in as 41, which would be uh, four and one together. It would be the Magician and the Emperor, or it could be four tens, which is the wheel. Or three tens and 11, which would be Justice. Or any other number combination that gets you to 40. And I believe that was inverted. Well. So we have the dice. This is also an extra card, Major Arcana Energy. Three and nine, I see the Empress and Virgo or other combinations that get you there. Total is 12. This adds up to five, which could be the Hierophant, which is what I feel that is actually, um, which would be the Emperor and the Magician combined anyway. Um, but we'll get there. So we have the dice, which is Chance. I just heard Take a Chance on Me by ABBA. ABBA in my head. 14, The Fox with Nine of Wands. Do 
12 would be the hanged man. Through the masks, inverted. This is also an extra card. So we have the emperor number four again, plus zero, or four tens. And this is inverted. The masks. We all wear masks, metaphorically speaking. Okay, so here's the woman, Venus energy, Ace of Swords, and she's looking towards this man who's upside down. 29 breaking down to 11, so it could be the High Priestess and the Hermit, or as 11 it could be Justice, although in some decks 11 and 8 are switched and it could be Strength, but I think for this reading it gives me Justice. <sighs> The stars, number 16 in this deck, six of cups inverted. This is um, can be alignment, but here it's giving me like a going back in time kind of energy, especially with that six of cups up, upside down. So if 18, this is loyalty inverted with the 10 of cups. Heckin' Papa right there. Gah. The fishies, king of pentacles. I almost said diamonds because it is king of diamonds on this card, but king of pentacles, 34, the fishies, three, the empress, and four, the emperor number, combining to seven, which could be the chariot, or it could be seven pentacles, which is patience. Fishies. Abundance. Fishies. Down here in the corner, we have 26, the book. Ten of Pentacles. So this is upright, which means the book is opening up into something. But the way that it's angled, it's opening up to the entire rest of the reading. So this is that point where it's sort of like the why and things are coming out, which is what I was saying with the tiles. Eleven, we have birches with the jack of wands. This could be the knight or the page here, depending. Usually I see this as a page because it's an eleven, but I don't necessarily feel that here. In fact, I kind of feel more like it is the knight of wands. Sort of carried away, you know, burning down the forest by accident kind of energy. Which reminds me of Biodome, because I just watched that finally yesterday came out in 1996 and I finally just friggin saw it. It was a terrible movie, but anyway. Um, big Knight of Wands energy. This is like whiplash. Much pain in whiplashes. Okay. The little lilies inverted with the King of Swords. Number 30. Which is right under the number 40. So I have a king inverted, I have the man inverted, I have emperor energies inverted. I have another king inverted with the four on it. This is, I mean, this is looks a lot like distorted masculine energy. And it looks like the aggressor here is someone in the masculine energy. It looks like the feminine energy is becoming aware of what's been going on. And it doesn't matter really if... Oh, crap, I forgot what I was going to say. It doesn't matter what your gender is. It matters who's holding what energy. It's um, The way that this masculine energy is coming across is almost angry. It's, it's kind of predatory. Six of Swords with the Tower is very phallic. Um, but the Six of Swords is usually sailing away from the bullshit. But we're looking at a bureaucracy here, and I think to some degree it's sort of this patriarchy and this sort of boys club. 
you know, it's like this again, this it is sort of like I'm going to conform by in this case sort of trying to take something from someone else. Usually when the Six of Swords is inverted, it tells me I need to go deeper. Here, there's an established superficiality. And I think that's why in this scenario, this distorted masculine ends up hurting themselves when they get a kickback from their behavior, when it snaps back at them. This ring here isn't like, oh, I love you, I want to marry you. It's a contract. It's, it's like you've set in stone a karmic contract with someone else. Or you've had a soul contract with them the whole time. But the thing is, you're sort of bound to the contract. And then I just heard to change your evil ways. It's a, I think it's a Santana song. This lack of alignment in the past can feed into this whole predatory relationship situation. Six of Cups inverted indicates no longer romanticizing the past. And it's coming right on this diagonal with this tower this edifice of bullshit in a diagonal with this cross. It's sort of... Usually with the cross inverted, it's like something's being released. The Six of Wands inverted is like a loss. It's like you might have thought that you came out on top here, but what you've lost is something some kind of is integrity you're not integrated you're out of balance you're, you're distorted so even though there's a release here and there's these sixes balanced between the fire and water it's it's um It's, it's almost like cutting off your leg so your other leg can win the race without realizing that they're still attached to you. And I, I don't really know how to describe that so that it makes more sense. Like cutting off your nose to spite your face. This is also kitty-cornered with this birch here, this whiplash. This, like, too hot to trot to go out there and you know, crack, take a crack at someone else. And it's, it's like, you're not, in the end, sort of punishing someone else just for existing has this, again, it's this kickback. It bounces off and comes back. There's an emotional deficit with this masculine energy. And you notice how it is cornered with, it's in a diagonal with this lack of loyalty. No happiness, no emotional balance. Stuck to this contract because of this sort of theft energy. This uh, trying to steal a chicken from the hen house energy. Nine of Wands is sort of holding a position, usually. But in this case, it's like I'm not holding the position. I'm stuck in a pattern of taking energy from other people. And this comes back around the corner with a, this king inverted, king of swords inverted, lack of truth. And with these lilies here, we see real flowers in front of a fake window. 
here it's it's like this is what's really going on there's really flowers behind this window but what's been presented is just the window the fake the fake version of stuff and the truth is that there's flowers which to me is representing an emotional thing there's real emotions behind this facade and all it takes is is one good kickback to break the window and the whole system goes down you're sort of gambling with your karma at this point the well inverted is is i mean the well is like about bringing stuff up and here it's to me it's like a sewage leak is how that looks I see this Ten of Cups here, and then over in this corner I see this book opening with the Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles is abundance. And it's over here with this King of Pentacles, which is another kind of abundance. Because the fish itself represents abundance. It's like needs are being met. It's sort of like learning how to meet your needs is, or the, is the cornerstone of this whole thing. And then all the way up here at the top, this feminine energy is looking at the truth and sort of seeing this comeuppance happen for this distorted masculine energy. Like, I know you've been f putting on a mask, and it's coming right over this window. And I also just heard window of opportunity which is what they thought they had by trying to siphon energy out of another person in some way. You know, acting like a clown, putting on a false presentation. This, These two cards next to each other is very much like a karma situation. It's like rolling the dice on your contract. It's like I'm playing with the deed to my soul. I kind of sort of established. This, I mean, it's just, it's so weird that there's like, the building is flooded, the basement is flooded. I feel like I want to get something else to tie this reading together. Like it doesn't flow very well. Notice too that this feminine has is reading the book that's in this corner down here. It's like this feminine has access to the contract between the two people. But the masculine is avoiding paying their mortgage on the contract. <laughs> Let me see. Let me get some. Oh, hi there. So it's T and R. Or. Another R, that's so weird. Holy crap. It's with the R's. Doesn't make any sense. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, now I've got something here. Alright, so Taurus Tower. And or is this idea of like this or that. It's like, do I want to be right or do I accept the tower moment? I also just heard he must accept his shame. This, oh, this masculine does not want to lose face. There's masks here. It's like if the masculine apologizes, it means they admit they did something wrong. It means they have to explain why, that missing why. And this, this doesn't give any indication of like, oh, we're going to get back together. It's, but it's two souls that have some kind of contract together. There's a binding. This is almost should be the devil card. But it's coming in with the ace of wands. It's like the whole point of anything is to clear out some karma. And it might even go back to some kind of other life or past. Um, oh, okay, so my segment ended and I was like five minutes further ahead. I was saying um, that it could be a past life thing or something that happened like five years ago or six months ago or two years ago or whatever. Um, and then I was looking at it as... This could be a microcosm of something that's playing out in the patriarchy at large, right? The masculine energy seeks to take from the feminine energy in some way. And this whole mic this whole contract here between these two people, it's like I'm going to go into the building and say, hey, look at all this raw sewage in here. And this might not be something that the masculine wanted to do, but there's, they're existing in a distorted space, and in some ways they did have to be goaded into, into it, whether it was uh, like by their higher self, by their soul contract itself um, being like, hey, you agree to do this at this time, get on there. There's something that sort of pushed them into it. This gut drive to act out this scenario at this time. It's like your, your call time is now. Like, start acting like an a-hole. Um, and I don't know if I said it in part of the video or in the part that I got cut off because I forgot to check my time and, and kept talking, but um, it makes me think of the movie Constantine. So there's a spoiler there if you haven't seen that. But in the movie Constantine they had this cross and they put it in the water for the whole building and made this the source water for the whole building into holy water and then they turned on the sprinkler so all the demons in the building got melted and got to and could no longer be on earth and that's kind of what I see here it's like I'm it's like I'm stirring the pot I'm upending the dross in the system by enacting this play here in the material world and it's almost like 
there's, there's an information coming through that the feminine is picking up on, like, this wasn't a personal hit on me. There's something bigger going on here. But I think what's happening is it's taking the masculine energy longer to catch up because now they feel like a piece of shit. But the cornerstone of this whole thing is knowledge of abundance for both the masculine and the feminine in the material world. And it doesn't have to be abundance either, because pentacles can be healing. It's a healing of resources between masculine and feminine energy in the material world. And that can be energetically. Or it could be going to the clinic and getting a physical remedy. Or it can be going to your therapist and getting a, me a mental remedy. Um, but there, there is an under, there's an unanswered why did you do this and an unanswered tower moment, not the tower here, the bureaucracy, but the tower in regular tarot everything collapsing but with this masculine energy inverted this guy's wearing the mar the uh, martian symbol which is exactly what the tower is and coming in inverted it's it's like saying the the most like virulent version of mars energy which is an, in fact the tower but notice that even the tower in most tower cards in the tarot, there's usually, it's usually a tower that's sitting on the water like it was a lighthouse that exploded. And we see here that we've got this like sewage water just sort of under the tower in this whole example. And there's a lot of, there is a lot of emotional content here. It's, there's a King of Cups inverted there's a Ten of Cups inverted. There's a Six of Cups inverted. Six and Ten, that's Sixteen. That's the tower, and it's an emotional tower. It's like a, like a mental breakdown. It's coming in under this, this feminine card, and it, it might be something that's happened in her past, but we're seeing that, you know, I have no loyalty to make sure that the masculine goes through this too. Sort of like the masculine is on his own in terms of dealing with the karma tied to the contract. So, I mean, this, this seems really chaotic but it's an energy that's been around for a while. And I think part of it has to do with the twin flame mythos of, you know, whichever one of us in masculine energy is treating the other one like crap, whoever's in feminine energy has been like, when's he going to be loving to me? Like... We're supposed to be together. There's a ring there. And I don't think it's always that simple. And I think that in terms of individual relationships, we kind of forget the as above, so below. That if we're dealing with some kind of heavy relationship, whether it's we think it's twin flame or not, whatever we call it, soulmate, whoever, you don't have to put up with toxicity from people, but if you end up in this sort of play that you feel like you can't get out of this kind of ridiculous pantomime, there there may be this uh, global psyche 
that you're actually working on with yourself as an example of it. And that's something that I even don't normally think about being like a, a sample of the evolution of energy relationships on the planet at the time at all. Right. It's, it's always like, it's never like, when is it going to be my time? It's like, it's never my time, but the issue still is sort of giving up, hanging on to the past, like not being caught up in history and in, in what the societal patterns are. So and again, this isn't a typical love reading either. It's, it's, it doesn't look like there's a rosy outcome. It looks like the backstory of, you know, a, a thriller film or something. Um, but I think it can explain a lot as to why people are not encountering relationships why so many people keep coming back to relationship terror readings and being like you know i've been watching these readings for every week for three years and it keeps saying that my person is going to be coming in the next you know six weeks six months whatever and it's like why isn't anything happening and there's a there's a lot more going on than what you see in the material world. And I think that maybe a lot of people are experiencing this sort of disconnect between the, the pattern, the bureaucracy of what the relationships are supposed to be and what their experience is just kind of feeds into this pattern that everyone is acting out their own part of this like multi-layered performance art of shifting the consciousness and it's not always pretty it's like it's like a it's kind of like a civil war reenactment but in terms of relationships and i, I think some of it goes into this like oh i can't believe i fell for that or this doesn't even seem real or am i making this up is this person a real person you know am i being catfished um you know like who are you really that kind of stuff it's 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 like and some of it has to do too with this idea that even the timelines were hazy for a year and a half and are just starting to settle down. Um, so in that, that sort of quantum field, that, like foam, like how are you supposed to pin down and close out the karma in a relationship? Everything seems like like constantly rolling for initiative. It's like hamster wheel of nothing ever working out. But this reading, even though it looks like a giant mess of crap, it's, it's again, it's, it's more for exposure. It's looking behind the window It's the man behind the curtain. So I'm going to leave it there. And people can sort of start picking out from the reading what makes sense for their situation. Because I could keep giving examples and it would sort of narrow down the field of what's in the template. You know, it's, it's like get your body checked, get your bank checked, get your emotions checked. You know, check your six. Like, who's got your back? 
But again, also this point that whoever has been in the distorted masculine energy, no, no matter what your physical body is doing, whoever has been in the masculine energy is, is sort of this double-edged sword of dealing with, oh my God, like, what did I do to somebody else? And also, like, now I feel crap. You know, the, the God, that car's loud. It's the emotional aspect of feeling the impact of what you put on someone else, right? It's like, like if you are king of the hill, you might feel nothing, but then six months later, you're like, I just I kicked a little kid in the chest to stand on this hill, like. Like, how would that feel? And then having an emotional breakdown. That's the kind of energy that we're looking at here. All right. So, and also I should point out too that sometimes when I do Lenormand cards, especially if I do pick a pile, almost always one of the piles will be for society at large or having something to do with the patriarchy. And here it ended up being a dual reading where it's a personal thing and having to do with society at large. Um, and it's probably why I, I felt like I needed to do the 16 grid, but I didn't want to. Um, so, I mean, Len Lenormand grids can be weird in that way. Um, but can also expose you know, things that we normally wouldn't think about, that you wouldn't always get squeezed out of something like roadblock moguls or the relationship reading. Okay. Which you can get. There's a whole list of stuff. It's down below. I'm going to move the... I should have said I was going to move the camera, but I didn't. Um, let's see if I can move this in without shutting the camera off. Come on. I'm going to have this um, as a slide at the end of this anyway. It's drifting because my tripod is soggy. Okay, so the list of readings is in text in the description box underneath here, or you can read it on my WordPress, or you can download the PDF version uh, from the WordPress also. Um, so the list of readings and how much they cost. If you found this helpful or useful or interesting in some way and you want to donate energy exchange, hit that tip jar. It's PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo, all cat the minion. Um, I've got coloring books, dark poetry, merch, prints, and actual art items here on Etsy. If you use coupon code 3 star 17, you get 17% off in my Etsy shop. Some of these works are slated for don donations to charity. That's like characters and celebrity drawings. And uh, I've got a lot of psychedelic stuff. And I've got some healing slash divination tools available. Like my paper charm kit. Um, I think that's it. I've got social media. You can come hang out with me. You can email me if you have any questions. All of this stuff is in my link tree all the contact points and payment points, linktr.ee slash catthaminion. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, check out my playlists tab, uh, and stay groovy, and we'll see you later. Bye.